on the cliffs of Lyme Regis, a story was waiting to be told, a story hidden for millions of years, buried beneath layers of rock and time. But the person destined to tell it wasn't a scholar or a scientist. She was a young girl, uneducated, poor, and dismissed by her peers. Her name was Mary Anning, and her discoveries would change the way we see the world. Her story begins not with a discovery, but with a storm. In 1800, when Mary was just a baby, a bolt of lightning struck the ground near her caretakers, killing them instantly. Mary survived, unharmed, and locals whispered that it had changed her, leaving her brighter, bolder, and filled with an energy no one could explain. Whether the story is true or not, it became a fitting metaphor for her life, a spark in a world that didn't yet know how much it needed her light. Mary grew up in the small coastal town of Lyme Regis, perched on England's Jurassic coast. It was a beautiful but unforgiving place, where the cliffs held secrets of the ancient past, and the sea could take just as much as it gave. Her father, a cabinet maker with a passion for fossils, taught Mary to see what others couldn't, the traces of a world long gone locked inside the rocks. Together they scoured the coastline, collecting snake stones, lady fingers and devil's toenails, strange names for what we now know as ammonites and other prehistoric fossils, but tragedy struck when Mary was just eleven years old. Her father, the man who had shared his love of fossils with her, fell from the cliffs he loved and died from his injuries soon after. His death left the family in debt, their lives precariously balanced on the edge of survival. Mary, still a child, took up her father's tools and the burden of keeping her family afloat. The fossils she sold to tourists weren't just curiosities, they were her lifeline. For Mary Anning, the cliffs of Lyme Regis were more than just a place to work. They were her sanctuary and her battleground. Every fossil she uncovered was a step further from the poverty that threatened to consume her family. She didn't just hunt fossils, she read the rocks like a book, uncovering secrets that no one else could see. At the age of 12, Mary made her first major discovery. While searching the cliffs with her brother, she noticed something unusual, a skull unlike anything she'd seen before. With patience and determination, she spent weeks chiseling the surrounding rock, revealing the skeleton of a creature that defied imagination. It was the ichthyosaur, a prehistoric reptile, part fish, part lizard, and entirely unlike anything alive today. Her find was revolutionary. At a time when the concept of extinction was considered heretical, Mary's ichthyosaur forced scientists and theologians alike to confront a new reality. How could a species simply vanish from God's creation? The fossils sparked debates that reached far beyond Lyme Regis, challenging centuries of established thought. But Mary didn't stop there. Years later, she uncovered the skeleton of another strange creature, the plesiosaur. With its long neck and serpentine body, it seemed like something out of legend. At first, her discovery was dismissed as a forgery. Male scientists scoffed at the idea that a young woman from a seaside town could uncover something so extraordinary. But Mary's careful excavation proved them wrong. The plesiosaur was real, and it was unlike anything the scientific world had ever seen. These discoveries didn't just change science, they defined it. Mary's fossils provided the first glimpses of life from an ancient earth, a world older and stranger than anyone had imagined, yet Despite the significance of her work, Mary remained on the fringes of the scientific community. The men who studied her finds took credit for them in papers and lectures, rarely acknowledging the woman who had brought them to light. But Mary didn't work for recognition. She worked for the truth, the stories buried in stone that only she could tell. Mary Anning wasn't just uncovering fossils, she was uncovering a new world, a prehistoric earth filled with creatures beyond imagination. Her discoveries weren't just curiosities, they were revelations, challenging the very foundation of what people believed about life and its origins, but the Cliffs of Lyme Regis didn't give up their secrets easily. They demanded patience, skill and courage, qualities Mary had in abundance. Her most famous find, the plesiosaur, became a defining moment in her life. At 22, she unearthed this extraordinary long-necked reptile, unlike anything anyone had seen before. Its serpentine body seemed almost mythical, and many scientists refused to believe it was real. 
Some even accused Mary of forging the fossil, unwilling to believe that a woman from a small town could have made such a groundbreaking discovery. But Mary's meticulous work left no room for doubt. The plesiosaur was genuine, and it forced the scientific community to confront the staggering diversity of ancient life. Her earlier discovery of the ichthyosaur had already sparked debates over extinction, a controversial concept at the time. Many people couldn't reconcile the idea that a species could simply disappear from God's creation. Mary's fossils didn't just provide evidence of extinction, they demanded an entirely new way of thinking about Earth's history. Each skeleton she uncovered was a piece of a puzzle no one else had even realized existed. These finds brought Mary some recognition among scientists who traveled to Lyme Regis to study her fossils and seek her advice. Yet even as they marveled at her skill, they treated her as an outsider. She wasn't invited to their societies or credited in their publications. Instead, they took her discoveries and claimed them as their own. For Mary, this wasn't just an insult. It was an injustice. But rather than dwell on the unfairness, she focused on the work, letting the fossils speak for themselves. Mary's ability to see what others overlooked extended beyond the spectacular skeletons of ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs. She also identified coprolites, fossilized excrement, and recognized their significance in understanding ancient ecosystems. It was a seemingly small discovery, but it offered valuable insights into the diets and habits of prehistoric creatures. While others sought fame through grand theories, Mary's brilliance lay in her attention to detail and her ability to piece together the story of life from the smallest fragments. Despite the magnitude of her contributions, Mary remained largely unrecognized during her lifetime. But her fossils, those creatures preserved in stone, were rewriting the story of life on Earth. They revealed an ancient world that had existed long before humans, challenging the notion of a static, unchanging creation. Through her work, Mary Anning was laying the groundwork for ideas that would shape modern science. The cliffs of Lyme Regis were both Mary's greatest ally and her fiercest enemy. They gave her the fossils that shaped her life, but they demanded a price. Landslides were common, and the unstable terrain claimed the life of her father when Mary was just a girl. Years later, the cliffs took something even more precious, her beloved dog Trey, who was killed in a sudden rockfall while guarding one of her excavation sites. For anyone else, the risks might have been too great. But Mary pressed on, knowing that each fossil she found wasn't just a discovery, it was her family's survival. Life was a constant battle against poverty. While some of her fossils sold for impressive sums, equivalent to thousands of pounds today, the money was never enough to lift her out of the hardship. What little she earned often went to support her mother and siblings or to her local church, where she found comfort in her faith. Fossil hunting wasn't a hobby or even a profession for Mary. It was a necessity, a lifeline in a world that offered her few other options. But the greatest struggles Mary faced weren't physical or financial, they were societal. Women in the 19th century were barred from scientific societies and denied the education and opportunities afforded to men. For Mary, this meant that no matter how extraordinary her finds were, she would never receive the recognition she deserved. The Geological Society of London, the most prestigious institution of its kind, refused to admit women. And Mary's name was absent from the scientific papers that described her discoveries. Instead, male scientists took credit for her work, using her fossils to build their own reputations while leaving her in obscurity. Even in her own town, Mary was often misunderstood. Some locals dismissed her as eccentric, while others whispered that her skill came from divine intervention. Stories of the lightning strike that had killed her caretakers as a baby fueled rumors that she had been touched by God or possessed some unnatural gift. But Mary's talent wasn't supernatural. It was the result of years of hard work, sharp observation, and an unwavering passion for uncovering the truth. Through all this, Mary never wavered. She wasn't motivated by fame or fortune. She was driven by a deep curiosity about the natural world. Each fossil she uncovered, each detail she carefully examined, brought her closer to understanding the Earth's ancient history. She was piecing together a story no one else could see, a story of creatures that once ruled the seas and skies but had vanished long before humans walked the Earth. 
Mary Anning wasn't just a fossil hunter, she was a pioneer, a woman who refused to let the limitations of her time define her. She worked not for recognition, but for the love of discovery, and her contributions to paleontology would echo far beyond her lifetime. Mary Anning's life ended far too soon. At just 47, she succumbed to breast cancer, leaving behind a legacy that even she might not have fully understood. But it was only in her death that the world began to acknowledge what she had accomplished. The Geological Society of London, which had excluded her throughout her life, paid tribute by commissioning a stained glass window in her local church. It depicted scenes of her work, a quiet acknowledgement of how much the field of paleontology owed to her skill and determination. Her fossils had done more than capture the imagination of the scientific community. They had changed its foundation. Before Mary, the earth was seen as static, a place where life began and remained as it had always been. But the skeletons she unearthed told a different story. The ichthyosaur and plesiosaur were proof of extinction, of a world where entire species had vanished, leaving only their bones as evidence. These creatures shattered the comfortable belief that the Earth's history was simple, replacing it with something far more vast and complex. Mary's discoveries paved the way for ideas that would revolutionize science. Without her fossils, the groundbreaking work of later scientists on evolution, extinction and geology might not have been possible. Yet, for all her contributions, Mary's name remained hidden for decades. The men who had profited from her expertise left her out of their papers and lectures, and for much of the 19th century, her story was overlooked. Today, that story is finally being told. Mary Anning is celebrated not just as a pioneer of paleontology, but as a symbol of resilience and courage. She was a woman who refused to be limited by her circumstances, who saw in the cliffs of Lyme Regis not just rocks, but the remnants of a forgotten world. Her life is a testament to the power of curiosity, to the idea that even the most unassuming person can change the world with enough passion and persistence. And then there's the tongue twister. She sells seashells on the seashore. Some say it was inspired by Mary, by the fossils she sold to keep her family afloat. Whether or not that's true, it feels fitting. Mary didn't just sell curiosities. She sold stories, stories of ancient oceans and creatures that defied imagination, stories that reshaped the way we see life on Earth. The cliffs of Lyme Regis still stand, battered by wind and waves, still guarding their secrets. But thanks to Mary Anning, we know how to look. Her work wasn't just about fossils, it was about finding meaning in the fragments left behind, about piecing together the story of life itself. And though she is gone, her legacy remains, written in stone, waiting for those with eyes to see.